예전 영상에서 말씀드린 적이 있는데 저는 첫째는 로컬 싱가포르 로컬 학교를 다니고 있고요 둘째는 UWC라는 인터내셔널 학교를 다니고 있는데요 예전에 어, 싱가포르 로컬 학교를 보내는 엄마들과의 대화에 대한 영상을 올린 적이 있었고 오늘은 UWC 엄마들과의 대화를 한 영상을 올릴 건데요 UWC를 선택한 이유와 UWC의 장점 그리고 UWC를 보내면서 학원은 꼭 필요한 것인가에 대한 얘기를 나눠봤어요. 각자의 경험과 생각의 차이가 있을 수 있으니 오늘 영상은 참고로만 봐주시면 좋을 것 같습니다. So I think he, so he first time he came to Singapore. And so this is the first time he heard about UWC. So he met, he met these boys age 16 to 17. Oh, 17, 18. 18 years old from UWC. How? Oh. Uh, through this rugby club. Oh. So my husband oh. played with them in the same rugby club. And yeah, they're really nice kids. So he said, oh, you know, when I have my own kids, yeah. I want them to study in oh. UWC. So that's the first thing. 영상이 촬영되고 있지 않은 걸 모르고 그리고 음성은 주변에 소음이 너무 많이 들어가서 저희가 제가 지금 사용할 수가 없는데요. 아, 지금 엄마의 말씀은 학교를 선택할 때 학교 투어를 와봤는데 투어를 다니다가 학교에서 놀고 있는 아이들을 인터뷰를 해봤대요. 그런데 그 아이들이 너무 밝아 보이고 그리고 친절하고 굉장히 예의가 발라서 굉장히 마음이 어, UWC, UWC에 대한 긍정적인 마음이 생겨서 아이들을 학교를 보냈고요. 그리고 굉장히 마음에 드는 거는 학교 퍼실리티가 좋고 그리고 음식도 너무 좋고 무엇보다 선생님들이 너무 마음에 든다는 얘기를 했습니다. 학교에서 어 1년에 한두 번씩 부모님하고 상담을 하는데요. 선생님들이 그때 아이들을 부모님보다 더잘 파악을 하고 있고 그거에 대해서 얘기를 나누는 것을 보면서 아 학교에서 정말 선생님들이 아이들을 어 많이 성심성의껏 돌봐주시고 계시는구나 라고 느껴서 굉장히 만족하고 있다고 어 얘기를 했습니다. 선생님 퀄러티를 얘기를 하면 제가 완전 100% 일반화할 수는 없지만 일반적으로 학년이 올라갈수록 선생님들은 훨씬 더 전문적이 되는 것 같아요. 그거는 카네빙트 한보다는 애들이 살아가는 방법을 배워야 된다고 생각을 하기 때문에 어, 저는 이제 제가 아까 와스빵 얘기했잖아요. 그 와스빵에서도 얘기가 나왔던 것처럼 거기서 이제 마지막에 저한테 딱 약간 울림이 있었던 메시지를 딱쓴 엄마가 한 말이 뭐였냐면 학교에다 기, 기대할 거를 그레이드를 기, 바랄 건지 러닝을 바라는 건지 그걸 명확하게 알아. 고등학교는 러닝이 더 우선이다. 그러니까 그렇지. 네가 바라는 게 그레이드면 학원 가라는 거고 그렇지 않으면 러닝에 맞는 거라는 거지. 음. 실패를 통해서도 배우는 거니까. 아카데믹 한 거는 1, 2년 뒤쳐진 것 같아요. 음. 주니어에서. 음. 딴 학교에 비하면. 음. 어쩜 로컬에 비하면 훨씬 더 뒤쳐질지도 몰라요. 음. 근데 학교가 가리키는 게 아카데믹 한게 뒤쳐질지 모르겠는데 애들이 그걸 이겨내고 극복하는 멘탈리티를 음. 지금 이 시간에 그걸 가르치는 데 시간을 쓰는 것 같아요. 음. 그 다음에 자기가 뭘 틀리는 거에 대한 두려움이 없어요. 음. 시행착오 하는 거에 대한 두려움을 음. 가질 필요 없다는 라걸 가르치는 거예요. 그래서 음. 제가 아이를 우리 학교에 보낸 지한달 만에 되게 감동을 했던 게 와가지고 음. 오늘 와서 엄마, 페일이 뭔지 알아? 그러는 음. 거예요. 페일? 그 페일이 뭔데? First attempt in learning. 음. <웃음> 너 완전히 너무 감동받았잖아. 그래서 그런 어떤 학교에서 애들을 퍼포먼스나 공연하는 맞아, 거잖아요. 맞아. 전, 어, 전 남한테 보여주기 시기에 행사를 하기 음. 위해서 이 행사를 하는 게 아니라 애들이 이런 걸 해봄으로써 이 안에서 배우는 거. 근데 그렇게 잘한 아이들이 하이에 가서 이제 마지막 결과물로 쏟아내는 것들은 보면 음. 정말 얘는 얘가 걔, 과거에 걔가 맞나 싶다라는 거지. 음. 정말 유치원 때부터 이 학교에 다닌 삼남, 삼형, 네, 삼남매가 있어요. 그래서 애들 멘탈이 달라요, 진짜로. 그래서 제가 말했잖아요, 아까. 누구 하이 레벨이 훨씬 어려운데 음. 지금 대학 입학을 하기 위해서 결과물을 받아내야 되는 애가 음. 누가 세 과목만 들으면 하이 레벨을 자기는 다섯 과목 내 음. 듣겠다고 하겠냐고요. 이게 더, 난 이거 더 공부하고 싶고 이게 더 재밌으니까 이거 나 이거 하이로 들을래 음. 라고 얘기를 해서 지금 학교에다가 막 우겨가지고 그게 됐는지 안 됐는지 모르겠어요. 그 어려서 그렇게 가르친 멘탈이 음. 나중에 빛을 바라는 거예요. 그러니까 음, 기, 그리고 그게 이제 너무 감사한 건 음. 살아가는 방법을 가르쳐주는 거라 
이렇게 졸업하고 나서 끝나는 게 아니고 그쵸. 그래서 우리 학교 애들이 자기가 선택해서 또 대학을 자기가 원하는 거 가서 종업 공부한 애들은 대학을 가서도 사실 음, 대학 가서 적응 못하는 애들 되게 많거든요. 공부 어. 방법이나 생활견이나 뭐 이런 것 때문에 왜냐면 그래요? 독립적으로 생활을 그렇게 해본 적이 없거든. 음. 그렇잖아요. 자기 타임 매니지먼트를 안. 음. 근데 이거를 아이비 자체가 자기 타임 매니지먼트가 안 되면 힘들게 돼 있어요. 음. 그러니까 어, 그 종업을 하고 나서도 애들이 학교에 온 친세 이렇게 유로 온 애들을 많이 이끌어준대요. 우리 학교 애들 음. 대학을 들어가면 음. 그냥 얘네들은 이미 거, 그 대학교 대학교에서 생활하는 거의 시기 공부를 이미 음, 음. 얘들은 다 거쳐서 온 거야. 음. 자기들은 그게 너무 익숙한 거죠. 음. 어쨌든 애들이 뭐 인생 다 살아가면서 도전하고 이런 거 배우고 이런 거다 좋은데. 어쨌든 아이비 시험 패스해야 되는 거잖아요. 네, 학교 그렇죠. 가려면. 그러면 그런 아카데믹적인 부분은 도대체 언제부터 뭘 어떻게 준비를 해야 되는 거예요? 네. 선생님들이 끌고 가세요. 애들을. 음. 그리고 이제 정말 부족하면 애도 이제 그 학교 분위기가 되게 좋아, 좋은 게, 조, 중요한 게 옆에서 친구들이 다 공부를 하니까 그렇게 공부 안 하던 우리 아들도 GCC 시험 볼때 공부하더라고요. 음. 네, 아이비 시험은 그러면은 모든 게다 약간 에세이처럼 쓰는 거예요, 정답이? 거의 다 그렇다. 아, 그, 그, 맞아요. 그냥 글쓰기예요. 그래서 글빨이 안 되고 영어가 안 되면 네. 그래서 음. 이도 저도 안될것 같으면 그냥 무조건 영어 공부만 열심히 하라고 또 얘기하는 아. 분들 계세요. So my son was in the local school yeah. and by primary 3 or primary 4 my husband felt that just in case he couldn't do very well in primary 6 that we should consider um, international school because of my son's personality type. He thought it might suit him better. So I had a lot of background information from friends and from living in Singapore about different international schools. And because I am from Ireland and my husband is from Malaysia, we didn't want a school that is only associated with one country. So we knew a lot about UWC and I had taught UWC primary school children in the church that I teach in and I knew above other schools and above other children that they are very good and uh, very kind and respectful and also there was a lot of mixed race children which my son is and also academically UWC is a very good school and holistically it has a lot to offer as usual and he completed the Singapore primary school leaving exam and he did quite well but then we decided for his personality type it would be better to move him. He likes service very much yeah and he got to experience different types of service and different types of activities helping people and also you get to mix with children from other grades yeah. or children from other classes, yeah. not your own class yeah. only. Yeah. And of course the teachers in UWC are yeah. really good yeah. and they give the child a lot of responsibility for his own work. Uh, so in the beginning, yeah. academically, yeah. it was a big challenge uh -huh. because in local school, the teacher will give you every paper that you need to study uh -huh and every paper that you need to practice on. But in UWC, suddenly you had to find a lot of things yourself and you had to be in charge of your own study. So it took him a while to adapt, especially in sciences. It took him a while to adapt to doing things differently. Grade eight, not a great year, I felt they don't uh, expect the children to push themselves so much academically. So we were lucky that because my son came from a local Singapore school, he had the background of, you have to work hard. And he also had the background of, oh, I have to do my homework today. And I have to submit my work tomorrow. So he had a very good basic background. And I felt that was good for him. But other children, I think they think grade eight is a bit of a relaxed year. And then suddenly they go to grade nine. And then I've heard lots of stories about, oh my goodness, suddenly they have so much work in grade nine because suddenly grade nine leads to grade 10. So in grade nine, you have to choose subjects and you have to focus on subjects. And then in grade 10, you have your exams. So that was my feeling. I think 
For me, it's a lot of money for primary school. And I think if I were to do it again, I think I would still send my son to a local primary. But partly the reason is because we are locals here. So my husband felt that he should be part of the local community. And also he's a boy, so he would be doing his national service. So it's important for him to mix with local people. And in fact, he's still friendly with his friends from primary school. Even though they all went to different types of schooling for secondary school. But I think in one way, I don't necessarily agree with tuition in primary school. However, my son had tuition from age four in Chinese because we couldn't help him. So I think for a language, maybe it's needed. Uh, it depends on the child. I mean, I suppose if you are a parent and you want your child to constantly be, be getting grade seven, which is the highest grade, seven in your exams, and you need your child to study hard and they're not, then maybe they need tuition. Or if it's a subject they cannot understand, maybe they need extra help. In our home, he would be expected to work hard and he would be expected to study and not just play. So I think it's uh, different homes, different children, different expectations. Yeah. I think we have to introduce our children to the idea of doing homework and being responsible for their work at a young age. So it's like reading. So our son has always been reading. We've always read with him. He's always been reading. So you have to read, teach it as a habit. And my husband says for mathematics, it's constant practice, 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 practice. Everybody knows that. So I think you cannot suddenly expect a child to suddenly in grade nine suddenly start reading or suddenly start studying. It should be introduced at an early age. And I think it teaches them discipline and it prepares them for life in all aspects, not just for study, but in life in general. And I think it's a good habit to have. Anyway, preparing something is important before we do school, but it's not about tuition, it's about having their like reading having yeah. Oh, I think that's more important. Then in high school, grade 11, grade 10, I understand that children who plan to study a certain subject in university, they need tuition to get them that high point. So I think in high school, that's where tuition is very important. Because for example, if you want to study engineering, even if you go to the US or to UK, you need higher level maths. And you need a seven in higher level maths if possible. So if your child really wants to do engineering and he's only getting fives, then that child really needs to have tuition or change his mind about what he wants to study. That's the other thing. Yeah, that's why many moms send their kids to the tuition is because they don't know what kind of subject he or she will want yeah. to do later. So at least they think they need to prepare to get seven. Yeah, in yeah. a subject, especially yeah, a subject. in maths. Yeah. Because I think if you have a seven in maths and you don't know what you want to study, then your options are very wide. Yeah, yeah, there are yeah. so many things you can study. Uh -huh. And in fact, in UWC, so many children are very, very interested in drama and art. And it's not just uh, Western children. Mm -hmm. So we're given the impression that only Western children are into this kind of activity, but actually no, yeah. there's lots of children and my friend's child is very very shy mm -hmm. and she took up drama in grade nine mm -hmm. and it has really really boosted her self-confidence and she has really grown mm -hmm. and matured mm -hmm. so it's very beneficial for somebody like that yeah. and uh, particularly in grade 11 and 12 mm -hmm. we have what's called a university advisor mm -hmm. and those are that department is so fantastic in this school because each child is allocated a university advisor and that advisor's role is to help your child decide about going to college. So what they want to study, where they want to study, what grades they need and how to apply. So sometimes the advisor will open up doors for the child that will not have already thought about.
um, at the end of grade nine. At the end of at grade, grade nine. nine. So he was doing DT, which is design and technology, in grade nine and grade eight, I think. And he really liked it because he was making things with his hands. But uh, grade ten, design and technology suddenly became paperwork only. Okay. No hands on. Okay. So it was all paperwork. Yeah. So suddenly he got very bored with it. Yeah. And then gradually through grade 10, he decided that there is no way he could work in an office situation. Uh -huh. He needed to be out amongst people. Yeah. So then he changed his mind and he thought about medicine. Uh -huh. So initially, because my husband and I are both from a medical background, we asked him, was he really sure? Because it's a very, very tough life and the study is very hard. So we told him, think about it very, very carefully. So we let him think about it until he was really sure in grade 11, that's what he wanted to do. And then we supported him, but all the way through, we told him, if you need to change your mind, it's no problem. Yeah. So the maths tutor was not available in grade nine. So he tutored himself from the internet. And then in grade 10, he really wanted to get a seven. So we got this uh, maths tutor to teach him in grade 10 so that he could get his uh, seven. Yeah, yeah, he always went to the teacher, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or sometimes I think they have a chat group so they ask each other. Yeah. So a lot of the times at the weekends, if he's doing, for example, his biology or his math, yeah. then he'll just write to the girl or the boy in the class, a few of them, hey, how do I do this? Yeah. So some of them are really good at it. Yeah. So then they'll, so they're very caring. Yeah, and, yeah. and they're also <clears throat> a very good group. They can share. So they don't feel, oh, well, this is my answer. I'm not going to share with anybody else. The so group we is they made the group by themselves or the teacher made the No, they made it by themselves, I think. Oh. I think they were in the class together or something like that. You are very satisfied with, with the results. Oh, absolutely. Program. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it depends on the parent or the child. And I think it depends on your expectations. Like. I always went to the uh, meetings in UWC um, and so many parents were complaining about so many things in the school. Um, they complained about not getting enough homework, they complained about some children in the class having tuition and some people not. So that's always a big issue in this school because they say if the teachers are teaching properly the child doesn't need tuition. So people, I think some children are not suitable for IB. I think some children here find it difficult to juggle so many things. But then some children, they cannot uh, manage study, homework, activity, service. It's too much for some children. Because the thing about UWC is, <clears throat> even though you have to do all these activities, you still have to study hard. And you still have to get the grades. So I think it doesn't suit everybody. But I think, yeah, it's important to have a good habit and yeah, to teach the children discipline from an early age. Yeah. 엄마들과 나눈 얘기를 종합해, 종합해 보자면 선생님들이 좋다. 아이비 교육의 가장 중요한 점은 서비스, 액티비티, 과제 등을 모두 하면서 공부를 해서 성적을 내야 하기 때문에 시간 관리를 스스로 굉장히 잘 해나가야 한다라고 말하고 있고요. UWC는 성적을 위한 학교라기보다 인생을 살아가는 방법을 배워가는 학교이다. 좋은 성적으로 훌륭한 대학 진학이 목표라면 그것을 전문적으로 추구하는 학교에 가는 게 맞다라고 얘기를 하고 있고요. 그리고 과외는 본인 스스로 정말 필요하다고 느끼는 과목에 한해 고등학교 때 하는 것을 추천하고 단 어릴 때부터 책 읽기와 꾸준한 공부 습관을 들일 필요는 있다 라고 엄마들이 얘기를 해주셨어요. 좋은 성적으로 훌륭한 대학 진학이 목표라면 전문적으로 추가는 학교에 가는 게 맞다라는 얘기는 어, UWC에서는 시간을 굉장히 많이 할애를 하거든요. 서비스나 액티비티 이런 것에서도요. 그리고 플러스 추가로 공부까지 굉장히 많이 해가지고 어, 성적을 내야 하기 때문에 공, 성적만 내기 위해서 공부만 하는 아이들보다 더 시간 관리를 철저하게 해야 되고 
그리고 굉장히 시간을 쪼개 가지고 공부를 하는데 사용해야 되기 때문에 어, 대학 진학을 목표로 하는 학교처럼 공부에 몰두할 수 있는 그런 환경이 될 수지를 않거든요. 그래서 사실 그게 약간 불만이신 분들도 있는 걸로 알고 있어요. 어, 그래서 아까 그 졸업생을 두신 분께서 만약에 성, 어, 대학교 진학하는 것만이 목표라면, 좋은 대학교 진학하는 것만이 목표라면, 그러면 그렇게 공부를 전문적으로 시키는 그런 학교에 가는 게 맞다라고 얘기를 하더라고요. 다시 한번 말씀드리지만 이거는 단세 분의 인터뷰였고요. 그리고 또 다른 생각을 가지고 계신 분들도 많이 있으실 거예요. 하지만 이 영상이 싱가포르에서 어떤 국제학교를 보낼까 고민하시는 분들께 조금이나마, 조금이나마 도움이 되기를 바라면서 만들어 보았습니다. 그럼 오늘, 오늘도 즐거운 하루 되세요.